Hello, my name's Charles Thornton and welcome to this video on strategy. I'm a lecturer in service operations management and business strategy at Plymouth Business School at the University of Plymouth. Before working at the University in Plymouth, I lectured in London and had a career in banking before that. I have a family, including a son at university. We enjoy living in the southwest with its beautiful countryside, beaches and moors. So today we're going to talk a bit about what strategy is. So what topics are we covering? What is strategy? Aspects of strategy, an introduction to some of the issues that we look at. A particular strategy challenge, and there are many. I've just picked out one and some trends that we see in strategy. So what is strategy? So we're going to start with a well accepted definition. So looking first of all at the first line, which is highlighted, strategy is about the long term direction of an organisation. So what does long term mean? This will vary from organisation to organisation. So, for example, if we're looking at an oil company where it takes a long time to find the oil, to extract the oil, and it may be doing that for a long period of time, looking to pay back a significant investment in equipment. Shell, for example, is looking at least into the 2040s to try to have a look and see what demand there is likely to be for oil that far ahead and framing a long term strategy around that. Other companies might be a much shorter term. So if we're thinking of something in a fast moving IT area, companies might be looking three to five years ahead. When we're talking about the direction of the organisation, what do we mean? We mean where it's heading. That could be in terms of size. So is it looking to grow a lot or is it perhaps happy to be a smaller organisation, um, perhaps a family business, for example, that is there uh, to give the family a certain income? The direction also includes things like the geographical scope. Is it a local organisation? What are its plans? Does it wish to stay local? Does it want to go regional, countrywide, continent wide? or perhaps worldwide? Does it have ambitions to be or is it a global organisation? We're also thinking of the customers that are served. So is it serving perhaps a small group of customers? Uh, might be perhaps specialist um, clothing, jackets for people who wear motorcycles? Or is it looking to go much broader and perhaps sell jackets that the general population might wear? Now those are both business to consumer, personal consumer. We can also have business to businesses where we might produce parts for machines that are used to manufacture something. So that would be business to business. And some organisations might choose to do both. So banks may well have personal customers and individual customers. So there's quite a few choices that organisations are making there in terms of the direction. So how does that happen? So it's the choices and then we have to have actions. So we might decide something, but unless we implement something, it's not going to happen. About its resources. So the resources are those things that the company has that enable it to carry out its strategy, its staff, its um, money, its equipment and so on. So decisions made about that will then govern the scope. So how much can we produce, for example? So you know, we might decide we need a new factory. We might decide we need new retail outlets. We might decide we need uh, a new warehouse, perhaps if we're an online operation or we're in that industry. And what are we looking to do? We're looking to create advantageous positions. So it could be because we have the right resources. It could be because our resources are strong. And it's to create positions or relative to the changing environment and stakeholder context. So what do we mean by advantageous? 
we mean positions that will allow us to create to have a competitive advantage and that can be measured in a variety of ways finance market share sales combination of those are some of the ones that are used but we have to bear in mind that we're operating in a changing environment so how are we planning on what do we envisage that environment might be and how do we adapt to that and we need to do it within a stakeholder context is the definition we've got here so stakeholders can be really important in terms of perhaps the government and government regulations um, society you know, what are the tastes in society what are the demands in society so next question is who does strategy concern well, it's the senior managers within an organisation who I'd like to play a key part in driving the strategy and implementing it. They may have strategic planners who help them with this. But also all staff may be involved or they will be involved in implementing the strategy. But sometimes staff are involved in setting the strategic direction of a company. Sometimes this is the senior managers asking for ideas and information. Sometimes it can be more accidental. So um, Japan was successful in entering the US motorcycle market a few years ago because staff took some actions and it worked. And then that became the company's strategy. So what does strategy consist of? We have to know what our current strategic position is and we have to know what it is, what we're envisaging it being in the future. So if we're making investments, that might involve quite a lot of money and might take a while for them to happen. We need to be thinking about what is the external environment. We talk about the macro environment as being covering aspects such as political, economic, social and technological. So questions there might be, what do we envisage the economy is going to be like in a particular country, particular area in the future? So is it a growing economy and therefore an area we might want to be in? Or is it an economy that might not grow as fast? And perhaps there's another economy that's more that might look more attractive to us. We're also looking at what's happening at the industry level in terms of competition, um, the level of competition and the individual competitors. And the argument very roughly here is that we need to be able to have, be in an advantageous position against our competitors and that in one sense the fewer competitors there are the easier that's likely to be but also that we have to look at what our competitors are perhaps strong at and not so strong at and take that into account when we're planning and we might sum these up in there's an opportunity here perhaps there's a growing market where there might not be a lot of competition or there are threats here where perhaps the market might not grow so fast um, and there's lots of competition we also need to look inside the company itself. So what are we good at? What are our strengths and weaknesses? And these can include a range of things. It might be finance, might be the equipment we have, might be the staff we have, including the culture within the company. Is it a risk taking culture? Is it a culture you know, perhaps that values producing high quality items? Is it a culture that's very much predicated on low cost production? And again, we sum those up in strengths and weaknesses often. <clears throat> we also have to consider our stakeholders. So let's think a bit broader about these. So these are anybody who has a stake in the business. So it's the owners. Now in a small business, the owners may be managing it. In a larger business, the owners may be shareholders who are represented perhaps by the board of the company. So we have to take them along because at the end of the day, they employ the senior managers, they own the company. But we also need to think about the staff and how do we, you know, what are their views? What are they likely to work with? What do the customers want? What does broader society and government want? And perhaps what do our people who provide us with non-equity finance? So people perhaps like the banks. So we need to <coughs> frame our strategy within that environment and that consideration. 
so we're analyzing where we are as far as that's concerned <coughs> so more aspects of strategy so once we've done our analysis worked out strengths and weaknesses opportunities and threats is one way of doing it we also need to think about the direction of the business itself and this might be encapsulated in a strategy statement covering vision and mission for example and what we're doing here is setting out this long-term direction of the company and we might frame it in terms of the position within the market you know are we aiming for the premium end or the lower cost end for example we might frame it in terms of uh, what do we work with we work with metal perhaps um, we might frame it in terms of the solutions that we provide. So if we go back a few years ago, some companies were framing themselves in the US very much as railroad companies. And when that market disappeared and the car came along and aeroplanes came along, they fell back and are now much smaller than they ever used to be if they're still around. However, if their <coughs> strategy statement had framed it, where they were going in terms of transportation, it would have taken the business in a different direction. Having set that out, we then need to think a bit more detail of which markets and where within. So are we looking at low cost? Are we looking at differentiation where customers are coming to us, perhaps paying more because we offer a superior product? And are we going broad? Or are we focusing on a particular market? Occupying a niche might be less competitive. Also, that particular niche uh, may be where we could be really specialist and serve it well. We then also have to think of how do we compete in markets? And this might involve things, decisions around entry into markets. So these two often sort of fold in together. So do we enter a new market? Do we say we're going to focus and consolidate on this market? And we might even exit some markets where, for whatever reason, we're not that competitive. And questions here revolve around the products that we're going to sell. The geography, our customers, the value chain scope. Are we going to produce or is somebody else going to produce? Are we going to sell? Is somebody else going to sell? Those types of questions. And we have tools and methods to help us within that. So, for example, for market entry, are we going to go in ourselves and go for something called organic growth? Or are we going to, in fact, um, perhaps link up with another company that's already in the market? You know, and is that going to be a joint venture agreement? We're we going to think about licensing. So there's all sorts of methods that we could have a look at. And then we come to what might be called strategy in action. And here, one of the key things that we're thinking about is how do we take these ideas that we've got at this stage forward? And first of all, we may have too many ideas. We may have too many options. So we have to evaluate those and say we're going to focus on a fewer number of things and perhaps do them significantly better. And then we move into the area of implementation. So how do we actually start to get things going? How do we actually start to fully implement those options? And that takes us into a world of managing change. It takes us into a world where you know, some of the actions will be handed over to different parts of the business. And in a few minutes time, we're going to consider what parts of the business, what other aspects, skills and knowledge that strategists need. So in effect, we're talking about managing change um, is one aspect of implementation. So strategy is multidisciplinary. So it will draw on economics. So for a large organization, we may even have an economics department. It will draw on accounting and finance because we need to understand the implications of our actions on the company's financial position the impact that has us on the strategy that we're doing as well. We need to be aware of marketing. What knowledge do we have of customers? How strong is our brand? And then for all of these, we'll be moving across. And these are some of the areas 
particularly the accounting and finance, the marketing, the human resources and others that we're going to look at, where we hand over some of the detailed work on implementation. So we might think about operations as well, where we produce the good or service. Uh, we may have research and development, legal teams, etc., etc. So these are areas that we need to have an understanding and a knowledge of because they will be areas of the business that we're looking at to see how strong we are, looking at economics, if we have an economics team for information about the world outside us in terms of economics. Um, and these will also be the parts of the business that we're resourcing and they carry out the plans for the strategy. So a strategist needs to have an understanding of these areas and understand how they might interlink as well. You know, so for example, if we look at economics, um, you know, what is happening to wages in the economy that we're operating in? Um, and if wages are operating perhaps are growing quite fast, then that might mean that we have to pay more wages, higher wages to our staff, which could impact on our financial position, impact on the staff that we're able to recruit. Um, so it will have a knock on effect through an organisation. So I'm going to pick now on just one challenge. There are quite a few of them but just pick on one to give you an idea that there are challenges that we have to think about and understand within strategic management. So one view of setting out a strategy is that we look at the outside first and then look at the inside of the organisation. So we're thinking here of the market position first. So we're saying, where is there a market now, ideally and in the future, where we think we uh, could compete effectively because perhaps there's not many companies in it and the companies in it perhaps we're assessing as not very strong. So we're looking very much at outside information and then we say, OK, how do we get the resources to do this? There's another way of doing it, which is the inside out, which says, what are we strong at? What are we good at? Now let's find a market that we can compete in. And a lot of companies will be considering both and there might be a balance. But at some stage, we may have to make a decision of do we wish the resources to have priority to constrain the markets that we're operating in? Or do we say we're going to pick a market and then we're confident we can create the resources or develop the resources that we need? Some trends. First one we might want to look at is globalization. So if we're thinking of globalization, it has a massive <coughs> impact on competition, for example. So if I'm selling something before we were looking globally, then I would just be considering who was my local competition. Now I could be competing if I'm selling something online with companies around the world. Now, in one sense, that's greater competition. In another sense, it's more opportunities because this particular business would then be able to sell globally rather than just locally. Because we have this quite heavily interlinked economy with um, goods being produced with a supply chain that may be global, we have to understand, and I think we've understood more recently, that um, you know, this can cause significant supply chain issues. Also, what is the trend and direction of some of these? So a few years ago, we might have said globalization means more trade. Countries were looking very much to you know, perhaps simplify barriers with trade. However, more recently, we've seen a different view. So, for example, the UK has changed its trading relationship with Europe and there's been issues between China and the US. So what we're asking here is what is the long term direction of that? Are we expecting this to be a hiccup and trade to get easier or are we going to see trade perhaps more in blocks? And that affects where we're thinking of going, if we're thinking of being a global company or if our supply chains perhaps are global, even if we're selling locally. Um, technology. 
so <clears throat> this can cause disruption to markets. So if we think of you know, the smartphone, when that came in very quickly, the previous phones disappeared. And some companies disappeared with it. Are we about to see the same perhaps in terms of the um, car market? Are we seeing it with electric vehicles over internal combustion engines? Issue of competition and cooperation. So do we, in fact, if we're in the same market, cooperate over certain things so that we ensure that we're all in the market later on? Business models as well. Technology has rapidly changed those. Uh, so companies such as Amazon and Alibaba couldn't have existed a few years ago. So again, where is that technology taking us? You know, what might the impact be of AI, for example? Environmental issues in terms of green issues. So there's been an argument that perhaps companies should be looking at what's called the triple bottom line and trying to balance economic performance, social impact, and the impact on the environment. And this is you know, quite a topical issue now. And we've seen some companies take some reasonably strong stances on this. So for example, Unilever, um, global producer, amongst other things, of uh, cosmetics and uh, detergents and so on, a large company has very much said that they think good business is to be environmentally friendly. We can take this broader and look at the idea of corporate social responsibility, which could be defined as ethical, economic, focused on ethics, economic development, quality of life, workforce, family and community. And here, for example, we might look at issues around uh, perhaps companies that manufacture drugs. There's been debates and discussions there on the balance between economic return, uh, ethics, perhaps in terms of research, and the whole issue of you know, drugs providing quality of life uh, for, you know, for people. So you know, what the issues there perhaps around pricing as well. Um, I lecture operations management as well, and one of the issues that we see very much there is speed and people desiring things quickly. So you know, to what extent is the world that we're in one whereby we have to, you know, we, customers wish things to happen quickly and therefore we have to set up our organisation so that we can respond quickly to changes in the market, but also we can respond quickly to a customer saying, I'd like to buy one of your products perhaps. We've also got to have a look at the idea of managing disruption. Um, I was reading a piece this morning that actually argued that whilst we're managing disruption now within global supply chains, we had to manage disruption through to, through to COVID and obviously supply chains and COVID are linked. But this article also suggested um, that in some countries, there's a legacy from the financial crash of a dozen or so years ago, um, which meant that certain there weren't investments in certain things like infrastructure, which have given us tighter bottlenecks. But perhaps we might have to be able to manage more disruption more. That would require companies perhaps to be more agile. And there's also talk as to whether we move from a just-in-time supply chain, where goods arrive just as the customers want them, with minimum storage, perhaps more to a just-in-case, so what do I need just in case something happens so I can still supply my customers that might involve more storage? OK, so thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you've uh, enjoyed and been interested by uh, this short video, which it has been my pleasure to make on strategy. Thank you and goodbye.